Hi, my name is Mahdi Mukaddam. I come from Iran and I'm doing my PhD in the research group of battery materials and technologies at the University of Turku. I'm currently working on solid boosted redox flow battery and I'm studying the thermodynamics and kinetics of these systems. Share of renewables in world's electricity production was only 27% in 2019. From the whole renewables, 6% was the share of wind and only 3% was the share of solar. But why the share of renewables in energy production is this small? To answer this question, we should learn about the relationship of energy demand and energy supply. The relationship is simple, equality, meaning that we have used to the on-demand electricity. But the biggest drawback of renewables is that we cannot control when and also how much we receive them because they are weather dependent. Let us assume that 100% of electricity is supplied by renewables. In a windy and sunny day, we have a lot of energy that may even exceed our need, and we have to waste the excess of energy. Instead, in a still gray day, energy supply falls behind the energy demand, and we might have electricity blackout. So wind and solar are not predictable and hence not reliable to maintain the equality relationship of energy supply and energy demand. Therefore, for now, their share in electricity production is a small. But for a carbon neutral world, we must increase the share of renewables. To compensate the weather dependency of renewables, something is missing, and that is a reliable energy storage facility, or simply a battery, to store the excess of energy during the day and give the energy back to the grid during the night. This battery would be a game changer. But what battery is this? Lithium ion battery? Lithium ion batteries are found in phones, laptops, and in electric cars. Since they are small and lightweight, and therefore suitable for domestic use and transportation. However, lithium-ion batteries are expensive due to using elements like cobalt, highly flammable and therefore not safe, consisted of rare elements like lithium, and they become exhausted over time. For large-scale energy storage that is hundreds of megawatts, size and weight of the battery matter less than price, safety, ecological footprint, and lifetime. Therefore, lithium-ion batteries are not suitable for large-scale energy storage, although they are the most widely deployed type of battery in everyday life. Today, the use of earth-abundant elements and the application of environmentally friendly systems are needed. It is here that an alternative type of battery called redox flow battery shows much promise for larger scale energy storage. But what a redox flow battery is? In a redox flow battery, the liquid electrolyte solution flow between the power cell and the tanks. The electrolyte in one tank is positively charged and the other one is negatively charged. A membrane keeps the positive and the negative electrolytes separate from each other. Here, we take the Temtma and Zinc system as an example. In positive side, T plus gives an electron to the electrode and becomes T plus 2. The electron tra travels to the negative side through an external circuit. In the negative side, Zinc plus 2 receives that electron and becomes neutral zinc. And to maintain the charge neutrality, a potassium ion crosses through the membrane from positive side to negative side. This is how this battery provides electricity. Redox flow battery's chemistry is safe. In addition, contrary to a lithium ion battery, this battery can simply increase the capacity by having bigger tanks. This advantage offers a high flexibility for large scale energy storage. A redox flow battery has also a long lifetime. Therefore, redox flow battery is a promising system for large scale energy storage. However, redox flow batteries suffer from low energy density as compared with lithium ion battery. To address this problem, I am working on prototyping a new generation of redox flow batteries with much higher energy density. We call them solid boosted redox flow battery. Let's see how this battery works. For this battery, imagine the same system but with one difference. Copper hexacyanoferrate solid nanoparticles are added to the positive side. Our colleagues have shown that this addition increases the energy density of the battery drastically. Energy density of Tamsma electrolyte is 43 amp hour per liter, and for solid is 225 amp hour per liter. If the electrolyte and solid are mixed to a 50-50% volumetric ratio, the energy density increases to 125 amp hour per liter, which is a three-fold improvement as compared with the bare electrolyte. At University of Turku, in the research group of battery materials and technologies, we study and demonstrate the different aspects of this battery. In a solid boosted redox flow battery, solid particles are the main place for charge storage. In this example system, when we want to use the battery, copper hexacyanoferrate solid particles 
gives uh, an give an electron to T plus two and makes it T plus. Then T plus transfers the electron to the positive electrode in the cell, and then the electron moves to the negative side, and in this way, battery provides electricity. In my research, I study these electron transfer reactions from the thermodynamics and kinetics point of view. As an example, a thermodynamic challenge in this battery is that the electric potential of the electrolyte and the solid particle should match perfectly for optimized electron transfer. In my recent paper, it is demonstrated that how important the electric potentials are. In this graph, the vertical axis shows the electric potential, and the horizontal one shows the state of charge. The potential curve for solid particle is yellow, and for the electrolyte is blue. By increasing the potential, we can charge the solid particle. In here, the potential for electrolyte and solid are very close, meaning that the blue potential curve for the electrolyte almost overlays on the yellow curve for solid. In this case, we are able to utilize 80% of the solid material's capacity. But if the potential of the electrolyte is only 50 millivolts higher or lower than that, than that of the solid, meaning that the blue and yellow curve are not overlaid anymore, then the accessible storage capacity of the solid will decrease drastically. In my research, with these types of evaluations, I try to resolve the thermodynamics and kinetics limiting factors uh, for increasing the energy density of redox flow batteries. We aim to double the energy density. To conclude, for a carbon-neutral electricity production, the share of wind and solar must be increased. However, wind and solar should be coupled with batteries to be reliable. A redox flow battery is safe, clean, and inexpensive, and hence promising for wind and solar energy storage. But it has rather low energy density. Instead, a solid boosted redox flow battery shows a drastically boosted energy density. However, the thermodynamics and kinetics of the system are not yet clear. With the studying the thermodynamics and kinetics of the electron transfer and resolving the limiting factors, we expect to double the energy density of redox flow batteries. In brief, a solid boosted redox flow battery is essential for stepping towards a world with carbon neutral electricity production. Thank you. Mahri, thank you very much. Very interesting presentation. Uh, where do you think that your solid boosted flow batteries would first be applied? Which type of applications do you see as, as the first step? Yes, uh, they are going to be used as uh, energy storage for larger scale. Um, storages like storing the energy of wind and solar. Uh, so they are going to be used as big batteries. Wow. Where do you, you yourself see the biggest uh, threshold, the biggest challenge to be solved before, before uh, this goes, moves further? Yes, the challenges um, are mostly about uh, the electron transfer reactions within this battery, thermodynamically and kinetically. So after solving these challenges, uh, we can know how electron transfer reaction takes place, and then we can increase the storage density of these batteries. And when do you think that you know, know the answer to if, if it is go or no go? Uh, well, I would really love to have an answer till the end of my PhD, which is in two years. So okay. I hope so. I wish you all luck. Thank you. Thank you.